No pressure, great wisdom, right? <laughs> Me, wisdom, come on. If my wife was you, she, she wouldn't agree with that. Am I in the frame? Yes. Hi. <laughs> oh gosh. Hang on a second, I just wanted to get this up because it's quite important. Do I just, do I just look at this? Uh, to know what I'm supposed to be talking about this evening. <laughs> I do joke around a bit, I'm really sorry. You know? I can be here and be really serious if you want. I really can just say, I'm Jason Leosatis. We're all in trouble. Yeah, the, world's, <laughs> the world's gonna end. It's coming to a grinding halt, you know. I mean, I can do all that if you want. I'm really good at that, Anna Marcus. But um, the reason I don't want to do that this evening is because I'll do a bit of it if you want. Um, I just wanted to get the, the poster up. Here it is. Yeah, the, the title, uh, Marcus kindly sent me a thing. The Great Remembering, uh, The Revolution of Consciousness, and the Birthing of New Global Societies. We're all midwives. And I just want to tell you firstly, and I know I go on a little bit and diversify and go back and forth. Oh, louder. You right? No, Mike, okay. How loud do, do you want me to go? Is that, that loud enough? Okay. Louder? Yeah. <laughs> if my wife was here, she'd be going, no, no, no. When I, because I'm a bit Greek, when I first met her, um, I used to talk quite, quite and she, this one day she went, oh, oh. I went, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she said, too loud, too loud. And I went, what's the matter with it? Anyway, so I can be quite loud. But yeah, when I came through, it's funny, when I came downstairs and came through the door, I saw my name on the sign. And it's like Jason Osatis here tonight. It's like, my God, that's me, you know? So what I want to say to you before I start, you know, and I always see this uh, prerequisite thing. I'm, nothing, I'm not this special guy, you know, I haven't got all these wonderful abilities. But actually, we have, we all have, which I'll go into. We've all got tremendous abilities. We can actually change time. We can change uh, uh, man, uh, matter, okay? And I want to touch on that this evening. I'll go into it in a minute. I've got a couple of little notes, but I had Bruce Lipton on my show. I like Bruce, and I was with him in, in Totnes. And we spoke about the manipulation of matter via consciousness. Can you hear me okay at the back? Yeah? Is that right? which is a wonderful subject and a fascinating, exciting subject and that is part of what I talk about because I, I've studied shaman, sham, shamanism, I trained in the shamanic sort of realm. I've had first-hand experiences of how magnificent that can be and the good it can do and I've also had some horrible experiences about how bad it can be. Yeah? So there's a lot of um, things at play here in the world. But before I start, so I'll give you a little introduction. That's my book, The Emergency Transformation of Human Beings. Is it too loud for you in the front? No, no, it's good. You sure? Yeah, okay. I'll try and be enthusiastic. Um, I wrote that 12 years ago. Um, it, it was a bit too early in retrospect. Um, it should have been sort of written about now, you know? Um, and I, I, I talk in there a lot about a new epoch of consciousness. Um, but before I start, I want to say thank you to all of you, yeah? Thank you all so much uh, for being you, right? And they were saying, oh, get on with it, Jason. But it's not that simple, right? This is really important. I really mean it. And I get very emotional when I say this, right? Thank you all for being you. You told me your sto little story. A lady, I forgot where she is now, somewhere, about she used to look at Stephen Levine's work and Ram Dass and all that. And I've worked with people who are dying, yeah? And I know I'll go up and down and diversify here. Pull me back if you want to or shout something out. But I, I've been with people who are dying, right? That was it, it was you, right? So often when people are dying, if you're with someone who's dying, Stephen Levine used to help people across the threshold a lot. And he said that often there's that moment where it's like, <sighs> everything's so beautiful, everything's so beautiful. Because everything's been stripped away from you. Your name, your religion, your colour, your future, your past. And in my book I write a lot about that. About dying daily to the self. And, and what Covid has done and all these things that are going on now. The manipulation, the lies, the cheating. What I believe it's done for a lot of people. It's put us into that mode of uh, reassessing everything. People 
who aren't even thinking about what we're talking about, okay? They've been kicked off the hamster wheel and they've started to reflect on their lives and who they are, what they're doing, what the system is. What's it about working all their lives? There must be something more to this, right? There must be something more to this. And there is. And I know I'm passionate about it and that's what I'm here to talk about a little bit. Is people being free and people being everything they can be. And what we should be blossoming into. Most of you, oh, I'm sure you're all blossomed into what you should be here. But I get really angry about it and passionate. Because fear is paralytic to consciousness and development in a person. And there was a, a, a man called Wigglesworth. He tied off a caterpillar's metamorphic glands and it didn't become a butterfly. That's what fear does to us. And worry and anxiety. I know I'm starting off on a bit of a big shouty thing here. But I've got to get it off my chest. Not so much for people in here, but humanity's not blossoming into what it could be. It's potential, it's magnificence. We're creators, magicians with amnesia, most people in the world. And most people you see are little girls and boys who have never grown up since they went to school. I know I'm, I'm passionate, I am. That's half the problem. They're going along doing what they're told, yes, no, looking for the next person. To tell them what to do or say or be. It's a disgrace and it's a crime against humanity. I'm sorry to get so passionate about it. But it's really important. Humanity is crawling like a caterpillar on its belly. And we're all gods and goddesses in potential. I've seen it. I've witnessed it. I've witnessed miracles. I've seen amazing things happen to people. I've had amazing things happen to me. Miracles. I've been blessed to be with a lot of people who have helped me. And don't get me wrong, I'll say it again. I've got lots of problems still, okay? Ask my wife, okay? So anyway, that's why I wrote that book. And I've got to sort of give, give you a little bit of, uh, not me, 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 but I'm here to speak, so. I've had a lot of ups and downs. I've been shot at in Cape Town, homeless in Florida. When I met my wife, I was living in a car in a car park in Bath. <laughs> in Bath, and it was a Vauxhall Chevette estate. <laughs> Not any old car, right? And I met her in Waterstones bookshop in the self help section. I was, I had my. I had my <laughs> what well, can you say, man? You know? Talk about that thing, you know? She chatted me up, you know? Uh, but it was like, there we were, you know? And, and, and timings about everything, when you, you know, you, I'll talk about timing after, I'd love to. But I met her there and we, it was wonderful because we were both on the same journey, the same path. And we met exactly at the right time and I'll talk more about that later on because I'm passionate about those synchronicities and when the timing's right. And I said in the, in the thing, the fastest thing is that which is already there. And that's so true. The world we all want and, 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 and yearn and long for, right? I don't know about you lot. We should wake up every morning as human beings like this. <sighs> God, it's okay. Oh my God, it's that, I love you, I love you. Grab your kids, I love you. That's what we should be doing. But we're not, most people wake up with dread. It's the, I'm back to anger again. Okay, don't worry, I'll soften off. But most, we should wake up with such enthusiasm. But we don't. Why? Because we've been dulled, choked, browbeated. This world is a virtual heaven that's being turned into a virtual prison. And it's wrong. And it will stop. It will stop. And it's happening now already. It's happening now already. Anyway, so, uh, I just want to, want to, want to, uh, so, one of the things I wanted to say, one of the most important things that I say in all my talks or rants or whatever, is that um, we are at a critical fork in the road. You know, uh, 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 David Ike's talked about it for years. Uh, I, I've been with him. He's been on my show lots of times. I've got a show called um, uh, Project Humanity. It was outside the box. I'm banned off YouTube, obviously. Yay. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I've been doing this for too long. I'll tell you, I'm, I'm tired, I am. You know? I'm tired, I've been doing this work a long time, but I, I'm gonna keep going. I won't stop until I die or I'm shot or anything. I was in 
London years ago with Tony Benn. Do you remember the Iraq oh, War? Yeah. 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 Well, what a guy. Weapons of mass destruction. Remember all that? Wow. And they're still liars and cheats and criminals. So, but I'm not going to harp on all that. I want to be a bit enthusiastic tonight. Um, so, would be, I, I feel we're between two worlds. So, I, I, just to give you a quick background. So, I'm a, a writer. I've got a, um, an art gallery in Totnes in Devon. I'm an artist. You can have a look at my stuff on jasonisatisart.com. I'm an artist with words, I suppose, because that's why I wrote the book. I was pregnant with a book. It couldn't come out. Um, and here's, here's a good saying for you. Perfectionism equals paralysis. Right? Never don't step forward and be who you are. Never deny yourself that. Never. You know, when I, I said when I came in, I saw Jason Neosatis. It's just a label. I'm not Jason Neosatis. I'm not even solid under a microscope, and nor of any of you. It's a miracle world we're living in, right? So, my favorite analogy, and where we are now as humanity, I would say it's multifaceted and multi nuanced, but. One of the very basic analogies I like is it's like a, 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 a baby chick when it pecks its way out of an egg. It doesn't just think, I'll peck my way out, right? Poisons build inside the egg, which triggers the pecking. And I love that. Why is it a good analogy? Because that's what's happening now to humanity, right? And let us thank COVID for whatever you want to think about it. I mean, I had John O'Looney, the funeral director, on my show last night. I like that guy. I've had all sorts of other people, Dr. Shelley Tenpenny, Caddy Madey, all of them, Del Bigtree. Um, but the pecking of the egg is so important because why? Because guess what? That's what's happening. The poisons are building in the world with corruption, lies, cheating, misinformation, um, suppression, debt, anxiety, bills going up. I mean, come on. Heating bills are going up. They just sent 40, 40 billion to Ukraine or, you know, billions on weapons. It's like, look, stop it. I think it's a controlled demolition myself. And then in comes the great digital reset. And everyone will be saying, please. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course, everyone will be saying, please help us. What can we do? What are we going to do? We're helpless. We need help. Don't worry, girls and boys. We'll cancel all your debts. All you've got to do is sign up for a digital cashless reset. And people will be gagging for it. So... Uh, on to another couple of analogies made, but why I'm excited at the moment is because I'm so delighted this has happened. Lots of people have lost their jobs, there's people starving in Africa because of this debacle. But thank God it's happened because finally, you know who your family is. You know who your family is. Not only that, you know where you are more placed. Simple as this, do you want to carry on? with the system, the Frankenstein's monster, which has it's died loads of times. And then it's resuscitated. The system of debt and money and fear and anxiety. Debt and money and fear and anxiety. It's a disgrace. You get some money. Oh, you pay a bill. Oh, That's a crime against humanity. And, and, and look, I, I'm not saying money's all bad. It's what, how it ethically compromises people, right? So, what a fantastic critical time in history, right? If we do the right thing, not just if, if, <laughs> oh, my wife is here, she's going, oh, God, if we do the right thing, so we're being asked, what do we want, who are we going to be, and we're being asked to become what we are, I mean, most people in this room, I thought that gentleman was going to walk out, <laughs> <laughs> don't go yet, don't go yet, please, <laughs> I've had a lot of walkouts, I've had a lot of, had Things thrown at, you know, I've given talks to three people and 300 people. I don't care, it's my job. I'm here really to remind us of our magnificence and our potential, and a new world is waiting to be born, right? It's like saying to someone, the gifts that you possess, the miraculous telepathy, the gifts of healing, the gifts of giving, and, 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 and all those things. They're not something you have to try and get. They're something you've already got. They've just been suppressed with fear and anxiety. Honestly, I've met healers. It's incredible people, you know? Incredible people. We've all got those gifts. So that's, my, that's what I'm here to do, really. And why I'm excited now, my wife, she's got a thing called naturaleartheco.com. She's been working on it for 15 years. 
the timing hasn't been right. In full lockdown, I had millionaires sat on my lounge floor in secret meetings saying, let's go, Jason, it's time to build a new system before this one becomes so suppressive and chokes us so much, we can't get out. So, I'll just give you a quick oversight. I'll talk about it later. We're, we're, we're trying to get farms together. It's not just a, this hippie sort of commune, everyone, but crisp, clean farms, new societies, because I see us like we're born onto the M4 or M5, and you can't get off. It's like, am I going down to earth again? Yep. You sure? <laughs> yeah, off you're going. You know. And you're on debt. You, you know, your mother and father, they do their best for us. They don't want to bring us down, so they don't say, listen, Jason, you're three years old now. It's about time I told you how this system works, you know. You'll be working all your life, earning just enough money so you go back to the job the next week so you don't run. Blah, 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 right? They can't tell you that. So they do their best. We're victims of victims. They do their best. They're beautiful people. My mother and father, they did everything for me, you know. Sorry I spent all the money when I sold your house, Dad. There we go. You were right, I'm an idiot. Sorry, Dad. But, no, so they did their best. So, what the situation is, is now. What are we going to do? So, talk about solutions. I'll talk later about it more, but I want to just brush it past you now. What are we going to do? Natural Earth Equal Living. I've got people saying, I'm selling my house, Jason. Yes, I've got 350 grand. Yes, yes, yes. The timing hasn't been right with it, okay? But I can, I can tell you all about it again. I'm doing a show next week about it. Louise gave a talk on Tuesday about it, okay? It's going to be a center there, an exciting center for retreats, healing, rows and rows of polytunnels, farm. So you don't have to ask for so much planning permission. We've got a farmer who wants to come on board for the first project. He's going to be planting all the food. He's got tractors. We're going to have a center for healing and transformation and consciousness. Um, you know, so I said, we are going to, not, well, if it happens, we're going to. It's happening already. Um, and we're also going to uh, be having all sorts of other things going on. So that is happening. We need to create templates now at this critical moment in history. Because we are at a critical moment in history. We can carry on as we are. And, and accept all the, all, the, all the constraints, or we create something different. Well, we've still got a chance. <laughs> and I truly believe it's going to be great. Make one template, and then you've got people coming on courses, retreats, it's inspirational. What? You don't pay for water or food? <laughs> Imagine someone coming from another planet. Jason, I've seen people paying for water. Paying for water? Are you serious? I mean, I've always felt like this. For most people, it's like, Wait, of course you're going to pay for water. You know, pay for water? We were born on this planet. Yeah, I'm getting excited again. We were born on this planet. It's a miraculous, beautiful planet of harmony. It's a virtual paradise. And then we come here and some smart aleck has said, we'll take the water. We'll put ourselves between you and the teat of your beautiful Mother Earth and you'll pay for water, you'll pay for food, and you'll pay for clothing, and you'll pay to be housed. All your life. Now look, I know I'm ranting, but I'm excited about this because it shouldn't be like that. Well, everything can be free, Jason. Why? We're so conditioned and brainwashed. It's terrible. But it's changing. And it's going to happen. We just need a few templates. And what will happen when people come on retreats? I already know what's going to happen. They'll feel such joy there and such a connection. And meet family members. They'll say, I don't want to go back to my other life. In, last week at did you? Right. All about that in Cambridgeshire. Wonderful. In my little house, my little rabbit hutch, with my neighbours. Right? Well, okay then. Anyone else feel like that? Yeah, yeah, me. Would you like to live somewhere like that? Yeah, yeah. Right. You, all you five or six, ten people, go and sell your houses. Let's use the same template. Do it your ways. We're not telling you what to do. If you think it's attractive, let's start another one. There's not enough land to do that. Okay, but we've got to do something. Okay, that's, that's all I want to say, you know, about that. Uh, where are we? Um, so there, there literally is a smelling salts in the air now. Um, I, 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 I want to go on more about us being creators and manifestors and shamans and gods and goddesses. I've seen miracles happen, okay? And it's incredible, right? It's not really, it's normal, but I'll give you an example. I was with Bruce Lipton and we did a show called, uh, uh, the, uh, what was it? The, the Manipulation of Matter via Consciousness, okay? 
And I was just saying about miracles and how our bodies, and we can change our own bodies. All right? So I had a big lump on my finger, so I thought, I'd say, well, let's give it a chance. Okay, come on, Jason, you talk about this stuff. So they were going to operate. So it's shrinking, it's shrinking, it's shrinking, it's gone. It's shrinking, it's shrinking, it's shrinking, it's gone. And I kept saying it again and again, and it's gone. Okay? How <laughs> people say, come on, Jason, how can you manipulate matter by consciousness? Well, how did you get here tonight? That's a miracle, right? You know, whether you're making a pot of spaghetti or making a sandwich or waking up in the morning or going, it's a miracle. So people say, you can't manipulate your own body, your, your, your molecules. Right, okay. If I, I won't be too, it's a bit gross, but weeing and pooing, okay? Yes, you do. You just say, well, look, no, not yet. Right, <coughs> wait. Out. We have got so much amnesia. It's so frustrating and it's coming back. It really, really is. So, my, my, I would say to you, I've got these little, someone's called this the other day when I gave a talk, that's your comfort blanket. <laughs> I shouldn't need to write this. I know this stuff for crying out loud. It's embedded in my mind. Um, if you speak to a lot of people now, this is an exciting point. And if they were really honest, they'd say to you, and they come in my gallery, it's like a meeting hub like you've got here, right? They come in, they say, how are you doing, Jace? <laughs> how, how is it? And I say, well, if I felt normal and okay, I'd be really worried about myself, right? So I know, look, we can do affirmations. I used to do affirmations with people. You know, I used to work with people coming out of prison and stuff. You can make affirmations every day and every way I'm getting better and better. I'm happy all the time. I'm this, I'm that. You know, I always feel vibrantly happy. I'm in a state of positive consciousness all the time. Everything's happening perfectly, blah, blah, blah. You can do that. But in one sense, we must feel these feelings inside us. They're good. So if someone comes to my shop and says, Jace, I'm really depressed. I say, Con congratulations. That's exactly how you should feel. Living in a global casino mental asylum has become normal, right? <laughs> if you didn't feel like that, you'd have to worry about yourself. Now, before you say anything, we don't want to stay depressed. We don't want to say, I'm depressed. I should feel like this, you know. My own friend hung himself. I'm going around with me, I wonder why. But no, he didn't. I wasn't going around with him. He, he, was, uh, he lived a, a pure son. But... So yes, that feeling of despair and depression and anxiety and doubt and fear and uncertainty and damn, damn right sort of, I'm sick of this. That's a natural symptom from a healthy spirit, mind, and body in a system that's driving it absolutely mad. Because that's what it's doing. That's why I say, look at you, you're all such heroes, you know. You're not sat there like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm overdoing it. I'm getting a bit carried away, actually. But really, I'm just joking. It needs to be said, right? Because one of the greatest secrets that keeps this system going, in my humble opinion, is that people keep us keeping a secret how they feel. Right? Look what I did with my thumb then, it's like Tony Blair. Keep it. Stop. People keep it a secret how they feel. Morning, how are you? Great. How's it going, Jason? Great. Most people, if they were honest, would fall into your arms and weep and weep and weep. And that's why I've written in my book about the importance of crying. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that um, I think this thing, I'm, I'm dotting all over the place here, but I think this thing that we've all been through and are still going through, um, remember St. John of Patmos? He used to, uh, I think, he might not have, I don't know, but apparently the story was he used to baptise people, but not by splashing them, by holding their heads under the water, right? <laughs> Until they almost fainted, right? Yeah? It was pretty cruel, right? If he did it. But that's what's happened to people now. This has held our heads under the water. And it's almost like an awakening. I don't like the word awakening, really. But the COVID thing has been a tremendous awakening for so many people to start thinking of things. So I think what we're going through as humanity now is my guess. I'm not a wise person. I'm from Barry, South Wales, I'm just a normal guy, you know. But I get feelings about things, and often no, common sense is the best. 
Don't make it too spiritual, no? It's like being a beer, beer can. Most people feel it. Now, if they were honest, I know you all feel it because you wouldn't be here, right? You, know, you haven't necessarily come to see me. We've come together as a family because we all are resonating in some way or other. Well, all humans are. But we feel it. We feel it. What is it? We feel it. What is it? We feel it. We wake up the morning with it. I don't wake up in the morning and carry on my day and at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon I'll go, Hey, you know what Louise? I'm feeling that thing again. <laughs> that something's not right and humanity could be prospering and living in a virtual utopia. It's with me all the time, you know? So I think it's like, a, like, like aluminium that keeps being recycled into a beer can. We don't want to be beer cans anymore. Right? We want more. We want a vibrational existence of utopia on the planet. And it's possible. It's waiting within the womb of possibility to be born. There's only one problem. <laughs> no pressure. We're all the midwives. No pressure, right? God. I mean, sometimes I think... I'm just going to go and live in Greece. My family lived there in Kefalonia, right? I could be just sat there with the goats and the sheep and, you know, and saying, well, what are you doing today, Jason? Teapot that. There's nothing in Greek. Teapot that. I don't know. If you used to say to my uncle who was sat there with his sheep, he'd say, what are you doing, Macaulay? He wouldn't understand what you meant. He'd say, I don't know what you mean. I'm being, not doing. So most people are always being. We're running. Ah, ah, ah. Running, 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 running. And we're away from the moment all the time. We're in the future or the past. It's a tragedy. We've driven ourselves mad. We've gone insane as a species. <laughs> Not so much you lot in you. But we've gone insane as, insane as a species. So the greatest threat to humanity is what? Our own minds. That's what it is. And that's why I talk a lot in my book on very basic levels about coming home to ourselves. Right? It's a dislocation. It's a dismembering. It's a, it's, it's a forgetting, it's a, it's a tragedy. It is, it is. So I think that humanity is in recovery. Now some people say, I don't know what you're on about, mate. Right? What are you talking about, recovery? But most people, if they really concentrated, they'd feel it. We're recovering from, from, from almost like a spell, a, a system that's been cast upon us from birth to death and people say to me Jason I'm more passionate than I would normally be I don't know why sorry people say to me it's not that bad Jason look it, you've got to pay for a funeral right six grand yeah, yeah. you mean you've got to not only pay for water food housing clothing da, 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 da. you've got to pay for your funeral <laughs> you don't even get a bunch of flowers Dear Jason, thanks for all your work and pain and suffering. Here's a bunch of flowers. We don't care about you much, but have some flowers. You know. Are you serious? Or oh, we're getting 150 quid off our bill, right? I haven't applied for one yet, but I'm going to. It's like, don't Jason, you're playing into the system. Yeah, I'm blooming getting it, right? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm like Oliver Twist with our balls. Please, sir, give me some more. And I've been warning about this for 35 years. If we don't create a new system independent of government control, we will one day be like Oliver Twist with our balls saying, please help, please sir, give me more. So when the COVID thing happened, for me it was like, ha ha, at last! At last, there's the proof that at any time the rug can be pulled from under you, at any moment you can be rendered virtually helpless by one swipe of a pen or one BBC broadcast at six o'clock. Right? Now, Mike, look, you all know this anyway. Well, it's like, what's the point in even talking to you about it? You all know it. But I don't know why I'm talking about it. I've got no idea, but that's what I'm here for. So, uh, so I, I think it's a recovering, a remembering. Uh, I loved Ouspensky and Gurdjieff. Gurdjieff said, you can't escape from prison until you see it. I loved his work, yeah? Ouspensky said, P.D. Ouspensky, very hard reading. I'm a bit dumb, you know? Um, it's like... Self-remembering. So you forget and you remember. Because most of us have forgotten. It's like, 
We're not catching ourselves. It's always out there in the future. I know it's Eckhart Tolle talked about it, but it's all out there in the future. So I'm at a strange point now. I've got to just Eckhart Tolle reminded me. I've got to mention it to the lady earlier. Very strange world we're living in at the moment. I've got to try and talk to people about the situation that, that, that gives them the symptoms, right? I used to be more like Eckhart Tolle, Deepak Chopra. I love them, they're great, I've got all their books. But they never talk about what takes it away. That really bothers me, you know? And I know we're all doing our different job, you know, in the orchestra if you want to. But, you know, I love Eckhart Tolle, I've eaten all, all his books, stuffed them down me. But he never says, well, you know, find that magnificence, come back home, in the moment, in the now. But you've got to tell someone what takes that away, which is a system of absolute madness and slavery. That's what it is, yeah. right? And it's one that people aren't just worse. So I, I'm in a strange point at the moment. I've got to try and talk to people about finding their magnificence and remembering their, their, their joy and, and power. And, and you can get anything almost you want. You can manifest like a magician. You can. But... I've also got to talk still, which bothers me, about the dark stuff. Because listen, where I'm from in Totnes and Stroud, you'll get it as well, right? Here we go. Does this sound familiar? Everything's happening perfectly, Jason. You haven't got to worry about a thing, right? Really? Or, what you resist persists. Don't look at newspapers. What you resist persists. You're giving it your energy. Now, in one sense, that's true. I know it's true, in one sense. But how about what you don't resist persists? This system is playing out because no one's resisted it. And not only that, we haven't used our magnificence to create something different. Right? And we're in that place now, that, that, that I call it an inflection point. Uh, well, let me be a bit more brutal. We're at a dimension end. No pressure, guys. We're at a dimension end end. This is finished. It's over. We all feel it deep in our souls, deep in our hearts. Okay, it's been so brilliantly manufactured that we can hardly look at, uh, find a way out. Because people say to me, well what are you going to do about it Jason? How can you get out? How can you create a new system? That's the most amazing thing. And when you feel that deep inside yourself and think, well it is hard to get out. I've lived on narrow boats, I've lived in cars, I've lived in tents. I've gone in bins for food in Greece. I've tried to get out, but it pulls you back in. I moved off the narrow boat, then I put my head back in the noose of the system again. It's like, hey, I think I'll feel what it's like to be strangled again. Yeah. It's like, a, <laughs> oh God, a, I need more pain. You know? And even now, I'll tell you, I don't own my own house. I pay a thousand pound a month for my house. I pay for my shop, rent. So every time I make some money, a couple of grand goes in the bank. Whew, Oh my God. And then I got to pay it. Well, I'm a fool. I spent my dad's inheritance. Sorry, Dad, you were right. I did. But I watched him die for a long time and I probably needed a lot of treats after. But um, So, yeah, I, I think where we are now is very exciting, very daunting. We will build another system because we've got to. How can we not? Right? But it's just finding, finding um, how we're going to go about it. And let me just read quickly, the, this, I've got tiny little uh, chapters in this book, they're not, not big chapters. But when I say we're in a new epoch, I really mean it, right? It's exciting. We're in a really exciting epoch. Now, I'm Greek, the word epoch in Greek, I'll just tell you. Let me just read it quickly if you don't mind. The, it's called the transformation of consciousness, the birth of a new epoch of consciousness. The true transformation which will change our, change our whole existence is waiting within the womb of each person's consciousness to be born, right? I truly believe, and, and I think it's called the golden embryo in Sanskrit, Hiranya Garba, right? I think in Sanskrit. And uh, there was that guy, Sir, Sir Ryder Haggart, he wrote a book called She, and I think at a certain time she could walk into this blue flame and be transformed, right? And I am absolutely, absolutely convinced that's where we are now. And all, we, all the, oh, the hair always stands up on my arms when I mention it, because that's where we are. We're at that point where magic's happening inside us. So I think that we're giving birth to not only a new system which is waiting there to be born, 
Are we giving birth to something within ourselves? We're remembering our magnificence. And I know you all know how magnificent you are. I'm not being patronizing. You're amazing. You're so wonderful and beautiful and powerful and beautiful and fantastic. You know that. But we need reminding of it. We're incredible beings. Great light and love and healing and ma magic. So I'll just read this quickly. Humanity is undergoing a sacred pregnancy which nothing will stop. Though we have to push a little, right? Sorry everybody, we're going to have to push a little bit. <clears throat> have you ever seen a birth? I've seen one. I've seen four miscarriages as well, my wife had. That wasn't very nice. And I use that as a bit of an analogy because I don't, I don't want to be doom and gloomy here tonight, but we have, there's a portal of, portal of opportunity now and there's a, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a window of opportunity. As the old system collapses, and I've said many times, if we don't build something else, it'll collapse on us, right? I would also call it, I know I'm going off topic a bit, I would call it the inception of manual override. Okay? The inception of manual override. So we're on a plane, humanity's on a huge jet. In the cockpit, there's greedy psychopaths and narcissistic egomaniacs, right? And the main thing for them, and this is the truth, I'm not saying they're all horrible, it's predicated the system on profit, power, short-term greed, and control. That's it. And there's people on the plane, humanity, saying, we want something different. You've been on automatic pilot for years. It crashes, it comes back. This, that, blah, blah. People die, people are born. Woo! So I think we're at that point where we need to take back manual override now. And it's going to happen. It is happening. Uh, Sacred pregnancy, which nothing will stop, though we may have to push a little bit. The word epoch, this is a great word, comes from the Greek word epoche, which means, strangely enough, stoppage. Right? So ep epoch doesn't sort of mean just an old new thing. It means stoppage. And when I heard that, I thought, right, because, um, as I said, uh, 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 we're a pregnancy, we're not. the word epoch comes from the Greek word epoche, which means stoppage. In all pregnancies, you all know about pregnancies, or, or most of you, uh, uh, there's a point where the pregnancy stops and the birth begins. Right? I know I'm bouncing around with analogies, but I love it. That, I feel, I'm sorry to tell you, is where we are. It's exciting. The pregnant, that we've been pregnant with the new system wanting to be involved for a long time. I believe the pregnancy stopped now and the birth is beginning. And we're the midwives. We're not only the midwives, we're also the thing that's been born and with the mother giving birth to it. Three things, I think, yeah? We as humans are now at that critical point in our evolution and consciousness and we are being forced to prepare ourselves now as quickly as possible to let go of what we've been and embrace what we are becoming. The emergence and resurgence of what we once were, which has become dangerously overdue, like any pregnancy, it, it can go into danger and you, you can risk a miscarriage. It can be likened to an umbilical cord to ourselves, which has got to the point where it's now almost snapping completely, exacerbated by our system, which automatically disconnects us from our vibrant selves. So, in one sense, it's great that the system pushing us and choking us. Because like Bruce Slipton said when I had him on the show, he wrote The Biology of Belief, I was with him in Dartington. He said, in a Petri dish, when you attack a cell, it doesn't give up easily. It fights for its life, right? So you get someone, you try it with anyone. Even if someone's in a hospital, ill and dying, shove a pillow on their face. They won't give up easily. And nor are we going to, right? It's changing. As I said, our humanity is heavily pregnant with itself, and we as individuals are now being prompted to become the midwives for the birth of ourselves and the birth of the beginning of a whole new way of living and being on this planet based on a more symbiotic relationship with ourselves and everything else. We no longer have the luxury to put our transformation off until tomorrow. We are ripe, and so is the time. That time is right now. And it is. There's no doubt about it. No pressure, right? So it's exciting, it's daunting. Uh, what else do I say? Um, the deep sense of easy and uneasiness is good. Um, and, and I also just want to say, because I've got lo loads I could say, but 
just to round this a little bit off, on a positive note, we're living in the most miraculous place in the whole world, you know? It's incredible, you know? I mean, people forget. You know, I write about it a lot. When I was with my dad when he was dying, um, he, I said, he was saying how beautiful things were, but he loved life, he loved everything, he saw the miracles, he taught me, he did. But we forget about the miracles, and I said, if you want to remember the absolute miracle of life and the joy of life, hang around people who are dying, right? In my 20s, I used to go to the hospital to serve dinners to people who were dying, right? Not because I was a great guy, oh, I was trying to be a nice guy. It fed my spirit and my soul, you know? I used to drive the Help the Aged bus, people weeing themselves and, you know? It's like, life's a miracle. Just going like that. People say, is it, is it really a miracle, Jason? Well, I can do that. I can go like that. I can see. I showed my daughter, I said, come here, look in the mirror. We looked in the mirror, turned the lights on, then turned, I said, watch that black thing in your eye. Turned it on. What? It went, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. It's like, wow. Like, wow. I can smell. I can taste. I can touch. I can feel. I can move. I can run. I'm 60, I still do karate. I can run faster than most folks of 20. Not because I'm sure enough, because I just can, right? It's amazing. I can jump. This is an, a miracle. I can think. I can contact someone at a distance. We're all shamans. We're all gifted, gifted shamans and healers. And I've had it proved to me, right? I just want to say, mention that miracul miraculous thing, right? Because it's really important. Because it's there. It's not something, as I said earlier, we need to try and get. It's something we've got. It's just that most of us have given up on ourselves. You know? And one of, the, one of the big things that shifted me, I just want to tell you this. I told the story on, I was on Patrick Henenson's. Anyone know Patrick Henenson? Yay! Way, yes. Patrick! Yay, give me a shout. <laughs> I was, we did a live thing on his radio show this afternoon, so I was in a lay by in Bath talking to Patrick on his phone. Uh, on, the, on the live show, boiling on, yeah? And I said this same thing on there, because I wanted to make a point about the magnificence, okay? So here's one little tiny thing. When I was looking at all these things years ago, you, you get these little miracles that help you, and, and, and my dictionary was about honesty, that thick, big thing, because I was reading stuff that I hardly understood, and all these different, it was crazy. So every paragraph I was picking, the dictionary, it was almost worth, well, I was in my dad's house at half past 12 one night, it was a turning point in my life, and it'll sound like nothing to you, but I, well, maybe it won't, but I was shocked. So when you pick up a big dictionary like that, you don't say A is about by there, let me just take a guess on that. No, you just flick it open, and then you look for the A's, B's, C's, right? I flicked the dictionary, the word was right, I looked at it, it's like, wow, <laughs> what? Right? It happened four, five, six times. What? And then I wasn't scared, but I was in awe, right? It was like, oof. It was almost like I wasn't on my own. Ever had that feeling? It was like, wow. So I thought, okay, perhaps it's some kind of coincidence. The next word, I went like this. <coughs> then I went, now what is that? There's a word for it. Someone said geomancy or something. Regardless of that, what was that? That was some kind of miraculous miracle. I went up and I woke my father up. I'll never forget it. Dad, Dad, I need to tell you something. You're going to think I'm nuts. And actually, he was very, I thought he'd say, yeah, Jace, you're going on the twist. I told you. It's, you know, take it easy. Don't look at all this stuff. Right? <laughs> Just have a normal life. He said, I'll never forget. He said, perhaps it's showing you you're on the right path, right? And that spurred me on. And then I'll just tell you this as well. I was in Greece one time, and it's a long story about it. It's in my book. But I, I, I knew there was something more. And I'm not talking about God or Islam or Jehovah. Believe me, the real religion we need to tap into is what the word really means. It's called religare. That's what religion means. Religare, religamenting, retying to what we've lost. And we have lost something. We've lost our blooming miraculous magnificence. And I'm really passionate about it. Because it's terrible. And I was laying there one night in, 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 in awe of the, everything, and I, I wasn't drunk or drug. Something came to me and came right up through my legs. Quite a few people I, I know have, have had it. David Ike's had it. 
came up through my legs. <laughs> it was like, I couldn't even think. It was like, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and it surrounded me, this beautiful intelligence and healing. And it was more than that. It was like mind-blowing. And it was like, oh. <laughs> and I know it was like, almost like, Jason, you're on the right path. Keep going. This is a little, just a little marker for you. We can't give you any more higher experience than this or you'll faint. Because I would if I nearly put up a faint. It's like, wow. Well, there's something more to me than this spacesuit then. You know, I'm not even solid under a microscope. So what I'm just brushing on there is the miraculous. That, that it's, it's all around us. This building's not solid. This floor isn't solid. We're not solid. So someone says to me, ah, oh, Jason, do you believe in ETs? It's like, well, what do you think? What are we? What is this? This miracle of life. This incredible miracle of life. You know, I walk, I walk on, I see people walk, and it's like, wow. I used to do acid, LSD, years ago. Loads of it to get this buzz, man. You know, it was like... And I was with my wife one night in talk in Newquay, and we looked at the water, and there was all the lights, colour lights on the ship. And she said, look at that. And it was like... Wow! I wasn't on drinking or on drugs. I said I used to do LSD to see that. It's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. It's around us. There's miracles around us all over the place. We should be looking at each other in the street and going up to each other and going, Wow! You're so beautiful! My God! But we don't. We'd be locked up up in a straitjacket. You know? Perhaps that's where I need to be, but... But I just wanted to end that little bit on that, you know, the, the miraculous. And I was going to read a couple of more pas passages out of my book for you. But uh, how long we got? Well, you know, I'm ranting a bit, I'm not. Do we have a break or anything? Yeah. I bet you need a break, don't you? I, I, like um, Mark has said, let's, we'll all start having a chat and have some. I can't, I don't know if I can answer any questions, but it's always nice to have a few things thrown at you because I like that. But before, before we go into that, um, and remind me, before we go, can I read the last page of my book? Because we are all we are all artists of the future. Not yet. Before we go, if I can, because that will just inspire. I hope to inspire you with that. Because as an artist myself, I've been an artist for a long time, and um, well, we're all artists. That's the point to make here. We are all artists um, of the future, really. And and there's people. Again, it's a bit of a jokey thing, but there's no pressure. But there's people really, and I really mean it. There's people who haven't been born yet whose lives depend on what we do now or don't do, right? So there's people screaming from the future. I can almost hear them. Honest, I can. Do something. What, what you do now are creating consequences and feedback loops down the timeline that are creating our landing pad when we arrive there in spacesuits, right? So it's no pressure, but I often say this to people. People forget the fact that what we do now, almost everything we do, even if you open that door, you're creating a consequence. Or you're creating, uh, you know, a, 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 an outcome, right? So never think that the slightest thing you can do can, can help someone or, or make someone feel better, you know, or, or do some good, you know. And, and that is the thing with this thing about acts. They're like a surgeon's scalpel. It can do great things and it can do great harm. And I want to just, before we carry on, mention something about that, where we are now. I like the subject of, 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 of time lags between decision and fruition, right? So when you make a decision, me coming here, you inviting me here, there's always a time lag, a sticky, a sticky molasses slowness time lag between decision and its fruition. Now it's like, well, <coughs> so what? That's, there's no, no big deal about that. But it actually is a big deal. Because now, and I can't explain why or how, that molasses time lag between decision and its fruition is shrinking. And I see it everywhere, right? A crude example would be years ago with the Iraq war, they did all those things, and there was a time lag between when the light of truth was shone on it. Well, that's, off to, that's got a lot to do with the technology, right? But I'm seeing that more and more and more, right? I think something, whap, is there. It's like, hey, hey, what a responsibility. 
And I will say this, and this is something I learned from a great mentor of mine. He said, the molasses slowness time lag between decision and its fruition is human's protection against itself. Right? <laughs> and I'll add, in its current condition. Right? Now, if we could bridge the gap, I don't know if Jesus was sure. I have no idea. Or if you don't believe he was sure, someone else like that then. There's been lots of people who can bridge that gap between manifesting something like I did with my finger. I believe that could happen like that. Right? But in our current condition, most people would not be responsible enough to have that back. Because there'd be piles of Ferraris and naked women everywhere. <laughs> right? <laughs> Particularly with blokes. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Women, are je- women are often more thoughtful and careful. I don't know why. It's a reckless male thing possibility. You know? The, 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 the hunter-gatherer. I've got two motorbikes. One of them does nearly 200 miles an hour. It's stupid. It's not good for the environment. Blah, blah, blah. Sometimes I race people in my car and have a bit of fun, you know. Not, not, not so dangerous, but it's a blokey thing. But I wanted to mention that because that's really exciting. And at the same time also, which is exciting, when things were done like Iraq and things unscrupulous acts from government and people, uh, um, unscrupulous gangs of people like government and their higher abodes, there was always a time lag, a sticky time lag between when things were done that were unethical and then the light of shh, truth was shone on. And now that's fallen away. It's beautiful. It's like you almost know what they're going to do before they even do it. It's like, we see you. We see you. We see you. And the only way they... The Simpsons. Oh, God, the Simpsons. Those shows on the symptoms where they predicted things, you know, it's like, wow, they're showing you. Someone showed me a brilliant pack of cards from the 80s, I think it was called the Illuminati card game, right? Have you seen it? It blew my mind. It was like Trump was on it, the Twin Towers, this, that. I've never seen anything like it. Have you seen it? Oh, it blew my mind. This bloke showed me, and I'm, nothing much shocks me. I've had all sorts happen to me. But he showed me, and I was absolutely blown away. It's like, what? You know. Anyway, but just, just a little quick, another quick thing I wanted to say. That we must have hope, right? Hope is so important, yeah? In hypnotism, if you hypnotize someone and you take away their future, they get very, very, very depressed. Instantly almost, right? Because that's because their hope's been taken away. They don't know what's coming. We need to have hope. We need to have inspiration. We need to... to I'll give you another example. <laughs> I know I'm bouncing around. I had Lynn McTaggart on my show, right? She wrote The Power of Eight. She's an amazing woman. She writes the magazine What Doctors Don't Tell You. They've tried to close it down so many times, right? Lynn has been doing experiments for years with groups of people. Like we'll have someone in here who's got something wrong with them, you know. And we'll all focus our attention on it. It's going, it's going, it's gone, right? Or an outcome of something else. We need this to happen. It's going to happen, right? And I want to just remind myself as well that the power we've got to create those outcomes and to manifest something new is astonishing. It's been proved again and again and again. I've done it in the shop. I really need this. I need it now. And the person will walk in. It's like, woof. So what I'm saying to you is we can do that with a new world. We can do it with a new system. You focus on it. They can focus on what they like on their mayhem and chaos and greed, we'll focus on something different. And not only that, of course, you've got to also act and do something. A great mentor, the same guy, Charles Muses. Anyone here to Charles Muses, Museos, the Lion Path? No. I'm always curious, because not many people knew about him, but he said to me, at a, or in his book rather, not to me, I exaggerated there, he said, at a critical time in human history, people will be brought together as if by magic, right? And it's like tapping metal filings over a shape. Do you remember years ago, those little things? Over a word or a car would appear or something. And that's happening now. Why? At a critical time in human history, he said, people will be brought together as if by magic. And I'm getting people walking in my shop all the time now, saying, hey, ah, hey, ah, ooh, ah, right? And, and we've got our faith. And we've got, to, we've got to 
we've got to bring that in. We've got to bring that in because we can manifest. We can bring it in. We can tap it into conformity. We are shamans. We are gifted magicians. And we've, we, 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 we've lost a lot of that, and it's, but it's still there. Um, two more things I want to say very quickly is I want to just say this. A lot of people say, I, I'm not sure if it's the Buddhists, or some people say, Everything's an illusion, right? And it, I think it's, a, it's worth saying because it's an easy way of brushing horrible things aside, right? We used to do, um, um, for my sins, we used to do conferences on child sex trafficking and satanic abuse of children, right? Wow. Yeah, right? Uh, I didn't want to do it. Someone's got to do it. And, and people used to say, I can't come. We used to have a vote. Oh, not many people there, right? They say, I can't, Jason, I love what you say, but I can't come to that conference. I can't face that. Well, that's why it's happening. I mean, sorry to get heavy about it. That's why it's happening, because people can't face it. And it's also very similar to what's happened with this whole thing, right? You know, John O'Looney, the facts that he's saying, it's like, shh, I can't put it on Facebook because I'll be banned immediately. But it's like, oh, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want I don't want to hear about it. And there's lots of reasons. It's a very bitter pill for people to swallow to actually admit they've been tricked most of their lives, right? I thought I was free. Don't tell me I'm a slave. It's not all slavery. It's joy as well. Don't worry. But so I wanted I wanted to mention that as well because it's very important. You know, we we, we you know it, it's we must face reality. And people say, ah, oh, what you resist persists, Jason. Well, what you don't resist persists. You've got to face monstrous acts. We've got to grow up. It's you the know? truth. It's the truth. It's, it's the truth. You have to express the truth. I don't want to face the truth. Why? Because you want to have to do something about it. And with the, with the child sat, satanic abuse of children and that, I, we really dug deep into it. And Robert David Steele was at one of the conferences. He's, he's now dead. They killed him with remdesivir. Yeah. Sorry, dog. But, um, yes. and, and whatever else it was. But, but you know, it's important because, well, when will you do something about it then? When it's your neighbor? Uh, doing something, or when when it when it's on top of you? Come on, we, we we've got to get 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 that get right. Because people, I remember Alan Russo. I, I mentioned him quite a bit because he was a, a comedian and a documentary filmmaker. Brilliant, Alan Russo. Check him out on YouTube. He's still on there. When he was dying of cancer, he told people what he used to speak about with Nick Rockefeller, and it's still on YouTube. Amazingly enough, and he's Nick Rockefeller said to him, "We control everything, Alan." What he was saying basically was, people are stupid. We can do anything to them, right? And he said, Aaron, who do you think started the um, women's, uh, you know, liberation movement? The women. Now, I don't know if it's definitely true, but it seems like it was. He said, no, we didn't. Don't be so stupid. We started that. I read that. Right? We started everything, every side. Yeah, we started it to get women out of the home, break the family up, stick them in work so we could tax them and get their kids in school so we can brainwash them. Yeah, but we know now, so we can... We know now, yeah. We didn't know before. No. Well, some and I, people did. And Alan Russo said to him, well, what, what, why are you so manipulative with humans? Why didn't you just leave them alone? And he said, Alan, because we've got it all planned for years, we're going to microchip humanity. That's what they're going to do. And I said to someone the other day, a lady, I, was in a, a to I went to a toilet in Kingsbridge, right? My wife went in the lady's toilet, I went in the other one, and a bloke followed my wife in the toilet. I thought, I was going to like, grab it, oi, you know? <laughs> And he said, because I could be quite feisty, oi! And it's like, well, he's, he, he's, I didn't say oi, but he was the attendant. Male attendant, attendant in female toilet, female attendant in men's toilet. Now, I just want to ask you something. Why don't they just swap around? It's like, no, because they're messing with our heads, right? And I said to the lady on the ice cream stall, she's only about 20, I said, look, can I ask you something? It's bothering me. I'm, an old, I, I'm like 60 or whatever. I said, Let me, what do you feel about that in there? What do, how does, when you go in there, you're having a poo, right? And, and you come out of there pulling your trousers up and you want to put your makeup on and there's a guy stood there, right? He could be a pervert, right? She said, to be honest with you, and she wasn't trying to be clever, she said, it doesn't bother me, you know? It doesn't bother me. I said, really? She said, no, honestly, I've grown up with it. I've grown up with it. I've got used to it. I felt like saying, hey, if I hit you on the back of the head with a stick, right? Well, you'll get used to that as well, right? You know. But, and then I said, well, I bought the microchip, because you know they want a microchip. Well, I'll never forget it, as long as I live. She picked the phone up and she said, that's a microchip. It's outside, not inside. I'll have it. She said, it's great. It's fantastic. And I just want to highlight those facts. 
Look, I know, I, I want to say this as well. I, I know I'm going off on a tangent. Sorry. I know I've got great gay friends, men who live together, women who live together. I've got so many different people I know, people in between, people switch back and forth. I, it, it, for me, it's all fine, right? But what's happening is they're skewing reality. That's what they're doing, right? An example, someone posted me a thing of a, um, a guy had a baby, okay? A guy had a baby, okay, <laughs> right? No, I shouldn't go on about it, but I'm going to say it. I'm sorry, on the camera. A guy had a baby. Uh, I'm sorry. I looked at the photo. I thought, wait. And I thought, because it makes you think, uh, confuses you, doesn't it? So I'm thinking, a guy's had a baby. How's a guy had a baby? Well, did it come out of his bum? I'm thinking, or did they put a womb inside of a guy? I don't know. And then I suddenly realized, it's not, it's not a guy with a beard who's pregnant, with his wife, this tall, beautiful. It's a guy in a dress and a woman with a beard. That's what it is. I'm sorry, I'm really serious about this. My, my wife's friend, uh, her son came over to school, she said, I want to be a boy, uh, mummy, I want to stay a boy. What have they told you in school? What's going on? Well, you know, we can go on puberty blockers and we can decide later what we want to be. I mean, guys, let me tell you something. It's becoming normal. They're skewing with people's heads. I'm sorry. And I know I'm sorry, Marcus. I know I'm ranting about it. And no, no, no. Honestly, it's really, really, we've got to look at these things, you know. We really, really have. But one last thing I want to say before I read that quick thing. This is where well, I used to cry when I used to listen to Martin Luther King. Because I, years ago, I married a black lady in Cape Town. I'm not with her now. We're still friends. I'm with my, my wife now for 30 some years. I was shot at in Cape Town. It was terrible. I went to Florida. We were homeless, living in a car because she was black and I couldn't live in a house in Florida. It was terrible. Right? But that's another story. But that's Martin Luther King. I, I used to cry when I used to listen to him speaking because I was like, what's that guy been through? He was very involved, obviously, like Malcolm X, with the abolition of black slavery. Where we are now, I'll say this and I'll say it openly. We are now at the inception of the abolition of human slavery. That's where we are. And it's the same thing, right? And that is what I feel I've got to talk about, the abolition of human slavery. And a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a remembering of freedom. You know, I want to say to people, this system that we live in as humans, it's predicated on freedom, happiness, joy, long-term love and, 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 and enthusiasm and the best possible thing for humanity. Not power, greed, short-term greed and, and, and um, manipulation. At any cost, they don't care how many people die. It's been proved again and again and again. No? So, what, 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 do we want to have questions or shall I read a little quick read, thing? Read that. Okay, let, let me read this one thing. Do, do any of you, you know the word apocalypse, yeah? It's, it's a funny word, apocalypse, yeah? I'll just read what I wrote about it. And I called it the people's Apoc apocalypse, yeah? I know I'm a bit traumatic, but I'm a poet and an artist, that's why, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And so our eyelids, it's called the People's Apocalypse, it's only a couple of paragraphs. And so our eyelids were forced open and we rem remembered ourselves. And again we could hear our own beautiful song. The word apocalypse comes from the Greek word apocalypsis, which means lifting of the veil. And it can be seen as a revelation. That revelation is happening for everybody on this planet now, which is simply a disclosure of something which has stayed hidden from the majority of mankind in this era dominated by terrible fear, and a falsehood and misconception. People's eyes are opening at different times, though the apocalypse of awakening is a fire which is being fanned in every person in varying intensities. Most people feel a deep emptiness and they know something is missing. They have been searching all their lives for something but they didn't know what it was, but they just knew they didn't have it. But now it's being gifted to them again and the thin veil between who they thought they were and who they really are is lifting at last, at last, at last. We will embrace ourselves fully as the fear, falsehoods and misconceptions fall away from before us all and we shall soar like an eagle to our highest selves again and we will feel that lonely gap between closed, being closed as we meet, fine, uh, as we meet, uh, hang on a minute, we will, hang on a minute, uh, I should build my own work, shouldn't I? 
Le de France est un peu plus de choses. Oui, c'est vrai. We will feel that lonely gap being closed as we meet with the love and reconnection and our dislocation is mended. We will finally bear our own unique fruit and we will eat of ourselves and our hunger will be no more. And we will feel what it was that we were searching for, which, with, which was with and within us all the time, right? It's like the musk deer. Ram Das talked about it, right? He, the analogy he gave is like a musk deer. Uh, he said the musk deer, they killed the musk deer for the smell of musk coming from its navel. They did. They don't do it now. His analogy was humans are like musk deers. <laughs> They're always out there <laughs> looking for the smell that's coming from ourselves. Right? It's a tragedy, right? It's a tragedy. Looking for the smell and the beauty that's coming from an in within us, right? God, we're starving to spiritual death. This can come as a shock for us sometimes to think that we have been searching outwardly for something which was with us all along. Like walking and searching for many years, seeking here and there, in this thing and that, up mountains, in valleys, in darkness and light, in every face and every voice, only to find it had been walking with us all the time, as though we had carried ourselves in our own rucksacks on our backs, till we fell down exhausted, and there we were. Right? Anyway, that's my little rant. Called the apocalypse. <laughs> That's one little bit in my book. But um, do 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 we want to go into questions and just chats and rants and? Why like, can't we just have a chat? I mean, it's like there'll be someone wanting to hear, you know, what what, what they come to hear. Maybe yeah. That, they could do that. What have you come? Let's let's start with that question, right? Yeah. <laughs> what? See, because what what ultimately have you come to hear? The emergence of the, global, the new global society. So, how are we doing that? How are we doing the new global society? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. What, what, so, obviously, there are things like the second generation's principle that have to be adhered to. Like otherwise, we're just rehashing the same thing for the next yeah. generations. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Like in terms of, I've been operating in different ways in the new paradigm for a while, but we keep falling back with the hierarchical structure. Yeah. yeah. You know, the patriarchal thing where someone wants more credit than everyone else yep. because it was their baby in the beginning. And, and, yep. and so, like, yep. what is the way around that? Obviously, this, the way that things are structured is changing. It's becoming much more fluid. So, in terms of how you set up a business, how, how you set up anything is changing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what we look for. Well, you know, there's, there's a lot in there. And I, I, I got to tell you, guys, I haven't got all the answers, right? I haven't, you know? I haven't got all the answers, but the way answers come is by talking about them, right? It's almost it answers itself, right? Uh, you know, I don't, in one sense, I want this system to collapse to its knees because it really needs to die. It's like a Frankenstein's monster, and I said it earlier, I know, but we keep resuscitating, giving mouth to mouth of something that's killing us, right? And I know I'm going to go off on a slight tangent here, but I will come back. So, I, people, I had a chat with Gerald Salente, he's a trends researcher, money man, right? I like Gerald, good sound guy. And we were talking about money years and years, this is like 10 years ago, and he was saying, Jason, you can't blame the money. You can't shout at a pile of money and say, it's all your fault, we need to get rid of you. It's the ethical compromises and the wrong buttons that money does and pushes, right? But if you wanted a, for me to give a sweeping statement, I don't think there should be any currency, right? Now, I know that's radical. It's like, because we then, how the hell can you operate without a currency? Well, we do everything for each other anyway. Yeah, so right? It's, yeah. it's just something in the, yeah. it's an illusion, another illusion. Yeah, it's insanity. And, and, and people say, oh, come on, it's not that bad. And I, 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 I shouldn't always give an analogy, but like if I was on Trafalgar Square and there was a thousand people and I said, there's a bar of gold, it's worth 10 million pounds, no one's ever going to find out what you've done to me, whether you've killed me, hit me, punched me, kicked me, spat at me. What are you all prepared to do? No one will ever find out, your family, ever, ever, ever. What are you prepared to do to get this? Who's going to spit at me? Well, if I said it in your instance, <laughs> I'd be covered in spit, surely. I'd... But it's like, right, okay, well, that's simple. Right, who's going to punch me, thump me in the face as hard as they possibly can to get this bar of gold? Well, a lot of people might not, right? But a lot of people would. They think I've got my kids in college. I can feed my family. I can help generations to come. Let's take it to level three. I've got a machete. Who's going to cut my finger off? Ooh, 
now then, right? And then people will start doing deals with you. I'll cut your finger off, we can share the money, right? You know. And then it'll be like, so you can go on and on down that timeline. Who's going to kill two million people in Iraq? Right? So money does ethically compromise and it checks. So when, I'll give you an example, I was at Hardwick, right? And Justin's on my show this week, right? Talking about the Bradby Pound. It is getting on a lot of people's nerves because I love Justin Dealey, but I, you know, a lot of people are thinking, it's just another currency, right? And, 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 and people are still ethically compromised, right? So my, my, my vision, it, to answer your question, I don't know, it, you know, I, I'm sure it is going to happen eventually, is no money at all. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, people got to be paid. There's plumbers, there's builders, there's this, there's that. The people that I know, right, uh, 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 are so, so desperate to have this society that we're talking about, they don't want to ever smell or touch that dreadful stuff again. But here's the thing. Generally, the more money people make, the less they care about people who haven't got money. You know, I was speaking to a woman the other day. Oh, well, yesterday, I think she said, my, they were horrible to me. My employees bossing us around and put, and then they go on a power trip. Oh, well, I regret that. Get that, get this, you know. I'm unemployable. I can't work for anyone anymore. But, so, the money thing has got to go. How will everything work out? Well, the thing is, this, and I'm, I'm being a bit negative when I say this, this system is, is a Frankenstein's monster. It's got such a momentum. It's like, whoa, whoa. How can you stop that, right? So when I talk about these new societies that we're talking about, although believe me, they are almost starting now, right? We've got the farmer on board, he's enthusiastic. Um, he's already been told he's got to get off his land. He's an amazing person. They're growing hemp there, they're growing flour, he's got a flower making machine. Other people I know, I don't want to do weeding and I don't want to do planting. I'm not good at it, I don't like it, yeah? I know people who do, they love it. They want to have their hands in the dirt all the time. I know people can build eco houses. I know people who build earth ships in Australia. They're all there. All these people I know at my at our fingertips, right? They're all there. They want to do it. I'll tell you something. I could never. I haven't got any money on me, actually. I don't think. But you know, it's like you know, someone comes from another planet and says, "What's this stuff you're using?" You know, I mean, it's it's absurd. This stuff that you're all using. What is it? Well, you've got to. You know, you've got to earn it, because uh, earn it, what's earn it? Imagine trying to explain it. I gave a big dialogue in that book about it. Well, okay, you go to a job, work for someone else, what, what? And they give you money, they give you money. Yeah, and then you get money, and then you come back next week, and, and it's a, 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 for a certain amount of time, an hour or something, no, no, no. A dustman gets this, a doctor gets this. And if you bring a guy home who's a dustman and says, Mum, Dad, this is Jason, he's a dustman. I know, I wasn't a dustman, but I was living in a, a, an old, old motorhome. <laughs> Mum, Dad, it's Jason, right? Wait, where do you live? In that van, I'm sorry, that dirty old thing. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Mum, Dad, here's uh, Mr. Johnson. He's a specialist uh, surgeon in um, the hospital. Come in, Mr. Johnson. Right, so the whole system stinks to high heaven. And if someone comes and says, what's this? No, it's your this. Well, it's crazy. We haven't got that where we're from. It's a symbiosis. It's love, caring, sharing. Really? It sounds stupid. That's the thing, that's where we are. It sounds so ridiculous to talk about another system, right? It's amazing, right? Who's that woman's face on there? Well, that's the queen. Who's the queen? What is this, a bloody beehive? You know. Well, she's, well she, where does she live? Well, in that big place over there. Why's she got that? Well, she killed loads of people, murdered people, <laughs> nicked nick their jewelry, you know, enslaved all the black brown people. You know, it's like, right? So, in a roundabout way, coming back to money and currency, I honestly don't think, I know we can change our consciousness and our ethical alarm bell, right? But I'll be honest with you, when it comes to money and what it can get and how it leapfrogs, because people say money doesn't make you happy, it really, really helps, you know? I you know, when I haven't got money, it's really hard, you know? It's the anxious anxiety. But I, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it without money, to really have a real good system. And the next question will probably be, well, there's always someone who's ethically compromised, who's going to try and get it off you. And this is why I say it needs a whole new beginning. School. I mean, come on. It's probably teachers you. My kid done go to school, you know. She can go if she wants to, you know. But, you know, it's just the same. Like Pink Floyd did. It's the same sausage machine all the time, going through, going through. How are you going to change it until you change that? You can try and teach people ethics and morals, but generally people stamp on each other's fingers to go up the corporate ladder. 
And they might start with an ethical alarm bell, which we've all got a brilliant ethical alarm bell inside us. It's pristine. You know what's right and wrong. If you spit at me, you know it's wrong. You know, if you look at me funny, you know it's wrong. It's brilliant in there. It's a beautiful tool, but it's compromised. And my father said, it's like the batteries have been taken out of it. The system takes its batteries out. So we ethically slowly compromise in myriads of ways. And I do myself to a degree, you know. So I, I think it's so huge. That's why we're starting with the National Ethico Living Project to, to create a, a, a pocket. Like I used to go up to Findon, you know, years ago. And it had problems, you know, it, it wasn't perfect. It was, it, was a, it was a little template, but I, that's why we want to build a template. And like, for instance, if I said to you, hey, come with me, I'm going to show you something. We walked in, there's a center, transformation consciousness. We're growing all our own herbs. There's, there's doctors there, there's he, you know, Zach Cox, my dentist, he's very interested in it, you know, because he'd love to be a part of something like that. Tess Laurie, you know, Tess Laurie, she's, she's doing it, right? They're going to do it. So it's like, okay, you say we can't do that, we're going to create our own system. You say we've got to take your drugs, we're going to create another system. It might be a little microcosm in a huge thing, but it could be an inspiring thing. And then you show people, come and have a look at this. See all these people? They're with their kids. <laughs> they see their wives every day and husbands. They're with their kids. They don't miss their kids growing up. They're on the land. Look how grounded they are. Yeah, you might have squabbles, but you, it's got to be a, an, an ethical... We've got to get back to that ethical moral code within us all. Because it's been compromised, this, and it's been eroded all the time. What's it going to end up like? Mad Max. Something crazy, something mad. Will we all implode? Perhaps we need to just do it and smash this thing down to bits. But the same people generally create something new who created the old thing. So that's why we've got to take control now and start doing that. And I forgot there was obviously loads of other things in there. But that, that I think, is the thing. It's, it's a huge undertaking, it is. And it seems almost impossible. But it's like, we've got to try and do something. We, we really have, you know. You're right, it's, it's definitely changing. And there are lots of people who've been working on things for years and years and years. The, the biggest stumbling block has always come down to funding. Yeah. Because when people who have the money recognize that that would actually change the system, yeah. that won't benefit, benefit yeah. them yeah. and their investment, they don't want anything to do with it. Or they want to buy it and then destroy it. Yeah, yeah. I know. Um, Yet, you know, at the same time, there are so many people now moving off grid, and, and, and this festival I was at last week all about love. I really recommend everyone to go next year. Um, totally transformational, you know, everyone looking after one another, safe to leave your tent open. Your kids. Your kids with other people, like, you know, everything looking after one another, that, that ethos. Yeah. Yeah. The end of the festival, not a trace of litter, in fact, there's positive trace, you know, and things are... Beautiful, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, that was 2,500 people. And, yeah, yeah. Um, that's just one festival, and there are loads of these. There are more and more happening every year, more and more people who are wearing multiple hats yeah. and, and coming yeah. to, to recognise that they yeah. are yeah. able and, and magicians. Right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, the strange thing is, is the more that we lose that, the more we want it back. Strangely enough, it's very amazing, you know, the more those things inside us are eroded, the more we're, we're yearning for them, like hungry, starving. And some people won't. They just don't care about people. But I truly believe in the human spirit. And the spirit of humanity is yearning to be a good person, is yearning to, to be happy and, and healthy and positive with people. And I can't help but help people. I, I do it selfishly because it feeds me. You know, what's his name? I went to see him. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, I forgot his name. He wrote the book, Why Kindness, Kindness is Good for You, you know. So when you're kind to someone, it actually releases oxytocins. It takes away cholesterol. I mean, come on, when it, it, it releases oxytocins when, when you're kind to someone, yeah? When you're kind. Yeah. It, his, his book is called Why Kindness is Good for You. David Hamilton. And he, he, he proves it. He's a doctor. He says it releases chemicals inside you. It heals your body when you're kind to someone. And it actually takes away cholesterol. When you're horrible to somebody, it does the complete and utter opposite, right? So... There's, there's a beautiful thing placed in all of us. All these, you could call it from nature or God or whatever you want to say, I don't know. But, and there's also, this is an, another thing I want to just mention before we go while I can. There's also an amazing thing placed inside us, a bit like an ethical alarm bell and an ethical moral uh, sounding alarm bell. And this is, a, this is a great thing and a bad thing. There's, there's an amazing capacity to endure suffering and pain and boredom. Right? In all of us, right? I know you recognize it, right? 
Well, it's placed there for a reason, so we can climb mountains, find food, wait while we're starving for a while, right? Be patient, right? You know, endure suffering, you know, a pain in your foot or something, you know. But the thing is, that's being taken full advantage of. We're enduring suffering and pain and boredom and, 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 and repetition when we shouldn't be. We should be saying, we've had enough of this crap. Well, we've been manipulated long enough. We've, we've had enough of this. We want to build something new. But of course, like you said, the amazing thing is, is it takes, in this paradigm, it takes money to build that new thing. I had a gentleman, I was with a gentleman the other day, and he was going to buy a farm for 1.5 million, you know? Those people in my house, we, we, we had it all worked out, you know? And then, because we haven't worked on ourselves and found our ba balance and sanity and, and moral compass and our goodness enough, then the squabble started. And little things usurped it. So it's about, back to what I said at the beginning, the greatest threat is our minds because we've got to find that magnificence within ourselves and that absolute moral compass again. And that's why I liked Ospensky's work because you, you were analysing yourself all the time, what you think and what you say and what you do. All the time. It's not like someone you think, oh, you know, I'm not going to do that, you know. But most people have become so insane and their minds are so <laughs> mad but if you say to someone, like in some of the work I do, they will say, you're not your mind completely. I talk about it in the book. You're not your mind. What do you mean I'm not my mind? You're not your mind exclusively. That gives you a chance to escape your madness, right? And your noise. Yeah, but I can't control my thoughts. So most people are dragged along like a wild horse on the back of their minds. And they say, well, prove I'm not my mind. I'll say, okay. Look at your mind. Watch what you're thinking. Whoa. I don't want to do that. It's too mad. But, but what it proves is if you can watch your mind, it proves you're not your mind. So if people were taught in school or by, 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 by beings to, to, to not, have their, not go mad in the first place, what we're trying to do is like we're going into a global mental casino asylum and saying, hey, right, <laughs> let's get going. It's like, but hang on, we've all gone mad, right? <laughs> we've all lost our minds, right? So it's, it is a huge undertaking, I've got to tell you. But, and, and sometimes I don't believe it myself. Sometimes I think, this is absolutely impossible. Let's just go to hell in a handbasket. But I've got to, you know, I've, I've got to have hope. And I've got to, and I do see now, particularly with the digital reset coming, I see people saying, because I don't know, some people here might have been vaccinated. And good for you if you have, right? I, 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 was, I really almost admire people who are, who are trying to do the right thing and be good people. Not now Pfizer's documents have come up, but that's, that's what you know, inspires me. People want to be good people, um, and they want to do the right thing. But it's going to take a big thing, it really is. But now there's been that divide in humanity almost. It's almost like a breakaway civilization has taken place, if you've noticed. I hate that word. It's a breakaway civilization. It's almost like, well, you lot, you almost know now who's going to go along and do whatever they're told and get hit with a stick, right? But there's also a lot of people who aren't. And if those people who aren't aren't, then we have to create something new because we won't be able to eat. I don't want to, I don't want to round this off with negative stuff, but I'm telling you, the way they're going, you won't be able to get food in a shop if you're not digitally enslaved. That's it. Right? So that is forcing us in a wonderful way. It's very exciting because it's forcing us to create and be the magnificent creators we actually all are. Most of what they're doing at this point is having the opposite effect to what they want. You know, That's the beauty of it. The rubber band's being pulled back and it's going to fling in the opposite direction. Yeah. And especially for things like the LGBTIQ yeah. set we need to. Like, yeah. They've, they've, they've fucked that up. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. literally driving parents to take their kids that's out, that's out of these centers. That's what's happening. That's I was with, I delivered a painting to someone in Bath on my way here today, and um, there two kids were there, and I was chatting to her, right? Hi, if you're watching. Right? Um, and uh, the, no one will know who you are, it's okay, right? Bath, two kids, mum, right? No, you're all right, yeah? And um, the one kid said, there's 30 kids in his class, 17 of them are identifying as something else. One of them, you won't believe it, but it's absolutely true. He had a straight face when he said it. They're identifying as a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, it's the truth. I said, Carl. He said, no, no. He said, and you're not allowed to, to question them. They're identifying as a blanket, and that's what they want, right? 
it's like, wow. But like you say, mums are pulling their kids out of school, blah, blah, blah. So you're right. It, it's almost, it's like, it's like a smelling sauce that's being thrown in people's face. But, you know, I, I can't answer all the questions, but anyone else want to talk about anything else? Like, you know, I'm here, I'm here to have a rant about people. Well, um, I can't hear very well. So go on. Hear it, hear it. Go on. Well, um, um, I think there's a big elephant in the room, and it's um, MT, technology. Yes. I'm, I'm wondering about what your relationship is with uh, technology. Right. I think it's got massive, um, uh, in terms of what you're saying about what needs to happen for, for human, humankind's evolution, technology is a crucial part of that. I mean, there's... There's sort of, you know, three, you know, broad uh, ways of being with technology. People are either uh, anti-technology, like people like John Zerzan and myself, or people say, oh, there's nothing intrinsically, intrinsically wrong with technology, it's we just have to, to develop the, the, like the right human relationship with it, and there's those who mindlessly, just blindly, just accept whatever technology brings. Now, I can link it to what you said in your first talk, and I'm thinking about things like... Um, um, remote uh, sensing, for example, things like that. Now, my view, coming from my, my position on technology, is this stuff actually militates, it stops us reconnecting with what you were talking about earlier. Yeah. So these things are actually a real problem yeah. because they actually get in the way of the kind of remembering that you were talking about earlier that needs to happen. So I'm just interested in what your view is about that. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, look, yeah. There's nothing really I could say about it. Right, you know. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trapped. I'm in it right at the moment. Okay. I needed to. I felt, let's just go through a few things. Personally, I needed to talk. I needed to sell pictures. Oh, I can't pay my rent, and I'm homeless, so I'm ethically compromising again. I'm perpetuating it. My daughter's 11, right? She was the only kid that didn't have a phone, right? She doesn't go to a normal school. She can go if she wants to, but she, she's not. If she wants to, she can. Top is a bit like that, lots, lots of kids, you know, uh, not going to school. But I held off and held off and held off. All the friends, 11th birthday, what do I do? I went and got a one, right? Uh, I didn't like myself. It's changed everything, okay? She's on there, she's speaking to her friends. She's having friends over. It's like you're losing control. Well, okay, I'm not in control, I suppose, anyway. But, but I agree with you. It's dull in our consciousness. Like, uh, anyone knew of, um, anyone knew of, uh, what's his name now? The 5G guy. Um, oh, the, the brilliant Arthur, guy. Arthur first Not Arthur, no, he's an amazing guy. Um, Steel, Mark Steele, no, Mark Steele, I've had a He's on a show again next week. Uh, I forgot his name now. He was in the Navy. He's a weapons guy, older guy. I went to his house. Oh, yes, yes. Ryan Ryan Ryan. Ryan. No. Um, Ryan. 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 That's right. Barry Trower. My apologies, Barry, if you ever see this man. <laughs> He's an amazing guy. And that guy, Barry Troy, I sat with him for two hours in his house and we did a great conversation. It's all on my channels. And then you go, wait, it's like, well, we've had it, you know, we're done for. So what are we going to do? It is, like you said, I'm glad you said it, it's like a surgeon's scalpel. It can be used ethically, but it's going to bounce up to 5G. You know, people are going to gag for it and it'll be the usual old thing. If you don't get 5G, you can't do your banking. Well, you can't use your own phones, you, you, you'll be out of the system. So every time it's about convenience and fear, convenience and fear, always, whatever it is. People come in my shop and they pay with their watches, right? And he said, I haven't got one of these anymore. It's over, one of these cars and cash. It's finished, it's terrible, you know? And in a sense, uh, uh, if they the tech... Like going back to cash though as well, another thing that's... Yeah, that's 8%. Yeah, yeah, they said we're yeah. all going back because we're all poor now. We're right. So we're all so getting our cash out of the bank. We're like, everyone, oh, well, this is for this. And that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yay. Yeah. <laughs> so, why, uh, Louise said, why can't we have uh, money with her nan's face on it, you know? Yeah. So, why can't we create our own currency? Or, or something, at least. But the truth is, we can. And what it's doing is it's prompting us to become really creative, right? It's prompting us to create new systems. That's what it's doing. And we might not even know what they are yet. I don't know. But I agree with you. We're in deep crap, mate. Deep crap. We're in terrible, terrible trouble. Because I'm like it myself. I lost, I lost my phone this morning, right? Yeah? Boys room, Jason. Hey? Boys room. <laughs> Boys room. I lost my phone this morning, right? I didn't, because here it is. 
But I had to, what did I have to do? I had to phone Patrick, Hen Patrick Henderson. I was on his live show at 3 o'clock. So I'm not on Patrick Henderson's live show in Australia. Big deal. So what? But I had promised Patrick. So I lost my phone. I couldn't find it. I went back up my shop, down to the house, inside the house, outside, looking under the car. I drove around the streets looking for my phone. I thought I'd put it on the roof of the car. I was going mental. Be honest, I was almost enjoying the anxiety and stress. It was really sad. But it was like, hey, you know, where's my bloody phone? And I'm poor Louise, where is it? Everyone start looking for the phone. It's like, oh, get over yourself. You know, it's not, but if, look, and, and I ended up using Louise's phone. I could sort of phone Patrick on that phone. The woman's house number was on this phone. I can't, do, I, look, look, I was in a dreadful state. I got in the car, I drove down the street, I heard it behind the seat. It's like, God, I'd gone completely bonkers, you know? Almost had 10 heart attacks. I guess my phone. It's like, look at it, it's like a bloody dummy. And I'm the same, I'm, I'm guilty of it. I'll check Facebook, and I'm stopping it more and more now. It's like, no, naughty boy, right? But it's finally, Barry Trower told me what it does when it's just there to you, right? It's like we're being fried, 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 fried. Our consciousness is being fried. Our miraculous gifts are being dull. I agree with you. I don't know. We're in serious trouble, mate. But I, I know it's like going backwards to go forwards. But when I imagine the land and people living on the land, and they're fed by the land, and spiritually yeah. filled by being on the land and doing wonderful things, I think even the people coming on retreats will say, I'm done, I'm keeping that out there. I want to feel the essence of myself in this place again, you know? So I do think the more we tap back in, you know. We are, um, you know, our street store, we are beginning to have people come up to our store and say, I've given up my smartphone. Wow. I've, I've actually right. stopped yeah. using yeah. 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 So Me, I know. <laughs> it's quite interesting. Fear, fear. So it's, it's fear, because it's, it's quite interesting that's beginning to happen. It is, it is. Look, I'm hoping one day I can just jump on it from a great height and shout, hooray, you know. But I, I, I gotta tell you the truth, I, I'm quite an addictive personality, right? I've had almost every addiction you can think of, including porn. I'll tell you the truth, right? Now, don't visualize me doing it, please, you know. It's like, don't, don't, right? No, but at one point I did. I was, I went through such a pure phase at one point, yeah, I was living on the canal on a canal boat. I'm very open to both things. And, because it's one of the greatest addictions on the planet. I've got to tell everybody on this camera, guys, watch it. Your wives are upstairs. They need intimacy. They love you. Stop jerking off. I'm really sorry, everybody, to be so explicit. Stop it now because you're ruining the planet, right? And I was on the canal boat and I didn't have tea. I didn't have sugar. I didn't have booze. I didn't have anything. I did a lot of drugs years ago. I still get nosebleeds. I was in a terrible state, okay? But I went really clean. And I was almost too pure for the planet. It was almost too light to be here. I was having spiritual experiences. It was an amazing time. And then I became a little bit smug, right? I thought, I'm quite enlightened, right? <laughs> the universe, or whatever you want to call it, or just me, went, oh, really? And one day I drove into Bath on my bicycle because I didn't have a car on the narrow boat. I bought a cup of coffee. I had coffee for years, right? And I thought, wow! It was like I was suddenly, I'm so happy! I can't, I can't believe it! And I was on my bicycle and everything looks so beautiful! Coffee! And then it was like, well, I wonder what it would be like to have chocolate again. And I had some chocolate. And then suddenly, I had everything again, right? Everything. And it was when the internet was just coming out. And I'll never forget, and if you're listening, you would be bloody ashamed of yourself if you're listening on this, on this thing. I don't think you will be. I love you dearly, by the way, still. A mate of mine said, here's some CDs. He was burning CDs of porn at the time. It was just as the internet was coming in, right? He was burning CDs of porn, and I'll never forget what he said as long as I live. He said, you, I'd have these, and I didn't want them. I really didn't, right? And he said, take them, he said, and you'll be asking your wife to go get some shopping so you can get on there and get your trousers down and get on with it. And, yeah, and he was absolutely right. Once I got a taste of it, I, did, I, 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 I know a guy, one of my friends I know from before, he's going to a therapist every week, he can't stop it, right? It's a quick fix, it's terrible, okay? And I crashed. It's massively addictive. There's no intimacy, it's easy, you get instant relief, you haven't got to get involved with anybody. There's no kissing and cuddling after, which is beautiful. What's going on? Don't relate. And you death, right? And it's a dreadful addiction that most people. It's it's this one of the scourges of the earth right now. 
is that, right? And it's, it's going into kids, they're all doing it, and let's have a look at this. So, I don't know, I went, oh, I don't know why I talked about that, what, what was it? But just about the addiction. <laughs> I'm telling you all about myself. Yeah? Wait, telling, telling consciousness again, life force, chi. Life force, chi, exactly. Down you go, and you go. So what I was saying, yeah, I crashed terribly, you know. And then suddenly I started pulling myself back out. I couldn't stay in that place, but it was good because I realised how low you can go, you know. It was terrible, I almost wanted to kill myself. It was awful, I did everything, I was guzzling bottles of whiskey every night, you name it, I did it. It was terrible. And slowly, I was let out, you know, it's like, right, now don't be so smug next time, Mr. Leosatis. You just come out and be a bit more humble, right? You're just like everyone else, you know. So yeah, the addictions and the traps and the this and the, the technology is, is a brilliant tool, I do think, if it was kept on a lower, <coughs> uh, uh, not such a high vibration of the, the damaging frequencies of 5G. And I have people like Mark Steele um, on my show talking about what they're doing and he's even saying, he's doing the magnets and everything, I don't want to go into it here, but he's saying that he reckons that, that, that they can do it with the 5G and just, just kill you like that, you know. I don't know if it's true, Mark, I don't know. But I, I'm not <coughs> I bet it is. I bet it is, yeah. I don't want to say anything, but I think it probably is. So it's a dreadful tool and it's going to be used for, for bad things. So, But I think the quicker we can be an example for people and live and create another system where you don't need that stuff. And people are saying it's like going back into the Stone Age. Well, perhaps we've got to. I don't know. That's my opinion. You've said it before, we're magicians. The real technology is ourselves. Yeah. That's the true technology. Yes, it is the true technology. You know, the true technology is, is, is absolutely amazing. You know? Take care, right? Yeah, thank you. Lots of love. Thank you for coming, yeah? Thank you. You know, the real technology is that. We don't need phones. We can telepathically call each other. I've done it. I've had people do it to me. It's like, oh, who's that? Yeah? Well, I might as well tell you, people who have died as well. <laughs> of course, like the dunces of the universe, man. It's like we've been shut down completely. It's like, whoa. It's like, honestly, God, we can, we can find each other. I've had someone come and find me and, and, and actually attack me. Um, he shouldn't have done it. It was very irresponsible, but it taught me a lot because I would never believe that was possible. Years ago. I knew about healing and someone could heal, come and touch you at a distance and try and help you. I know it's true. I, I, I'm not easily fooled. And then someone came and did me a, a harm, actually, once. Someone who knew about how to manipulate that thing and they came and found me and they hurt me and it was terrifying. So we've got all those technologies within ourselves, and we can do tremendous things. We can, we can move almost mountains. So I, I, I have got, still got great hope, but you know, I think that there is an urgency. I do, you know. And look, most people, who, you know, sometimes you've got to make yourself vulnerable to change, and that's not nice for most people, you know. You know, the street where I live, where I rent, if they all sold their houses, there'd be about 15 million pounds in the pot, right? Now, why, why should they do that? The guy over the road, he's in his garden, he comes out, he goes in, he comes out. He looks reasonably happy. I don't see him smiling that much, right? The guy over the road, he's a miserable bugger, actually, this other guy. I won't say which one he was, but... And the other guy, then, and you just look at each other, and you don't really need me, you get, feel xenophobic. Fifteen million quid you could buy, well, there's farms. Two million quid, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, forty. You what, you could buy eight farms with a hundred acres each? Yeah. So even if you didn't like your neighbours, well, live over there. And we're not, with the, with the um, natural ethical eco living, we're not talking, we're not, I'm not here to promote it, but we're not talking about living in each other's pockets and having meetings all the time and you can't talk unless you pass from the talking stick and that. It's not like that. People need their privacy. People need, need their, I don't want people coming and knocking my door and saying, hey, you know, I, I, people need their privacy. They need their power and their space around them. So, and, and, and I do truly believe the pilot one is going about to happen. And, and What's the pilot one? The pilot uh, project that Louise is doing, you know? Who's Louise? Louise is my partner, yeah? Um, and she's been working this out. It's called naturaleartheco-living.com, right? Um, I should have brought... Where is it? It's, it's a website. If you look at it, you'll see what she's doing, yeah? Naturaleartheco-living.com. Say it again, sorry? Site. Sorry? Oh, the building site, yeah. It's, it's waiting within the womb of possibility, right? It's there. I mean, there's people, farmers are struggling. So in Tottenham, we've got a group of people going around speaking to farmers who are struggling, 
who, and, and as we all probably know, the government's buying up all the land. Yeah. Look at, is it New Zealand or Holland, isn't it? They're buying, they're buying all the farmers up. Right? So, why? Because they, they, they don't want that to happen. They want you to be completely uh, uh, a reliance upon them for your food. Right? It's brilliant, you know? So, so I, I think it's, it's happening. I think it will happen. I'm convinced we will be getting farms. And I think if we can build, when we build the first one, it will be so inspirational and so uplifting and it will feed our souls so much more and more people will want to do it. Now I don't know the ratio to people to land. Justin Walker said that you can fit everyone on Brazil, I think he said. Uh, um, Texas. Texas, um, is it? Everybody can fit in Texas and have like... Um, a um, <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? So I don't know what... Well, I'm not a mathematician. Uh, but uh, I used to have a special maths teacher but I used to keep the money and not answer the door to when he used to come round. So that's why I don't know about maths, but I, I don't know the ratio of how it would all work, but I do know we've just got to try and do something, that's all. That's what keeps me going, hope. And I know we've got to keep going and keep trying and just, as, as things shuffle and change, we've got to try and build something new out of the ashes of the old system. Yeah. But we've got to build it before it collapses because it will collapse on us and crush us. How do you think that, I mean, just, you know, she spoke to a lot of people, I mean, yeah. what's, you know, what's the time? So right. It's so close now, I can't tell you. And I, I, did, I did recently say that I thought we needed another lockdown to accelerate it. <laughs> so people would be terrified, right? Right? That's what, I, that's what I did think, you know? A bit more monkey pox or something, and then it's going to be going to say, OK, OK, let's do it, right? But I got a guy who comes and, 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 and sees me in the shop. He's got 350 grand. I know that's not a lot of money. And to answer someone's question earlier, yes, people don't have to have money to be involved, you know. We've all got our gifts to give, right? And, and each community will be set up, you know, as you want it, set it up. But and this is in Devon. Everywhere. I, I, I would like to see them ubiquitous. I think if you created, when you create a really good one, and people are inspired by it, oh my God, it's working. Um, then you, uh, you can use that template anywhere. Are you doing it lawfully? Like common law university. That's law another, law. thank you for answering, asking that question. Thank you for that because so many people have said to us, if you, have you ever heard of Bibi Bacchus? I have come Yeah, I've had her on my show and I've had other people on my show about this, you know. And people have said to us, and it's very, it's very prominent that if you're going to do it, you've got to do it uh, without, without permission. Yeah, yeah, without permission, without government control in any way, shape, yeah. or form. Totally decoupled. Right. And I'll tell you the truth. The way I'm seeing it at the moment, I don't think we're going to be doing that. I'll tell you the truth. And I feel failed by saying that, right? Because if you start it under their thing, then, you know, you're stuffed before you start. Oh, absolutely, I agree. So I, I th never thought I'd hear myself say this. I don't want to sort of pick a fight with the government and say, we're doing this, we don't... Right? Because they're going to start just locking us down straight away and coming and taking everything, I think, right? So we want well, to make I've it. Got experience that, yeah. Say again? I have experience. Have you? Yeah. Right. And yeah. They, 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 they arrested people. And we we um, did a restoration of rights on a property in Monmouthshire. Yeah. And we were there for uh, a month. Yeah. And um, basically, we had all the legal, all the lawful stuff in order. We went to court. We uh, the judge stepped down three times, yeah. so he effectively he abandoned ship yeah. in their own legislation. But um, then he reconvened the case of another court without us and yeah. found us guilty um, yeah. by accident. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, then you know the whole thing was we were meant to arrest the judge yeah. or arrest the policeman, so we had hook into their system. And what happened is that some of us went back in to the property when the bailiffs were there and retook the property. But then the riot squad turned up in the morning. Everyone was arrested. Yeah. Um, so even, I mean, it's not a great story, to be honest, because it, it, it ended in failure. Yeah. But I don't know, it's still my feeling yeah. that that's, that's the, way. the way we have to do it. I agree. Even if we weren't successful, it did send ripples out yeah. of all the dice. Yeah. You know, we're not accepting your... Yeah. Um, yeah. Your presumptions. Yeah. Us. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I'm so sad to hear that. I'm sorry that happened. And thank you for trying. It's amazing what you did. You know. I'd like no, to hear more about that. Thank you so much. I mean, I know a guy who's been on my show. He was. He's, he's brilliant at the common law thing and everything. 
Oh, I've seen there's videos of him, a lot of them, and he, you know, he's there and saying to the policeman, You can't arrest me. Da 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 da. <laughs> Glass to me, there was a guy called, I forgot his name now, in one of the, I uh, went with Piers Corbyn and all these people in lockdown, the police tried to get us and blah blah blah. He said, You can't arrest me, it's action law, and blah, 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 blah. the next minute he's in the back of the van getting there. <laughs> so it's a tricky one, but I do truly believe that it will change like that, and I do truly believe that the law, the police, and the army, and it, it's changing. That I, we're on the cusp of an overlap, and I'll tell you how you can. Pr in my book, one of the. We're not keeping on my book, but uh, the, the chapter was called A Call to All Good People in Government, right? And what I was saying 12 years too early was there will come a point where it's becoming so obvious that it's corrupt and unjust that people in the lower echelons of government will come out because they'll know that if they stayed in there later on, they'd be seen, well, you were in there, you knew this was going on. Now, there's little inklings of that on GB News now. Michael Portillo's on there. Uh, and Widdicombe's on there. It's like they want to be on the right side of history, right? They're covering their ass. They're covering their ass. That's a better way of saying it, right? Yeah, and that's inspiring because they're saying, I, wanna, I don't want to be seen to be in that corruption. So what I think, to, to, to resonate with what you're saying, I think, I, I hate to say that probably we're going to go with the, the, the lawful way initially, we're, we're going to make it look really inspiring, and it will be really inspiring. We'll have people coming in with autism and things like that, do the polytunnels. We'll be having uh, people with mental health problems coming in, stuff like that. And we'll be, we'll be making it really, really inspiring in many ways so they can't say, hippies, get them, right? Yeah? <laughs> hippies, get them, close them down. They'll be like, oh, this is really, really an inspirational pilot project, right? And I think if we can do that, then later on, and I know they can just come and get it because the Queen owns that much of the soil and the Pope owns that much. What are they talking about? And they own the moon. Beer, you know. Uh, but um, I think you could, there, there's ways of doing it. Land Matters, we had them speaking at um, one of our conferences. Land Matters, amazing people, Simeon and Miranda. They were, you know, doing good jobs in London. Then they lived in a bus. They brought their kids up on the land. They made their kids little huts and they live in them and they had a bender and all that. And, you know, that Land Matters is an amazing place, so they're showing there is a way. And I, when I'm up there with him, I just feel so whole and complete and healed, just being on the land. Land Matters, it's called, in, near Totnes. There are people who've, 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 who've done it properly, it's legal. I don't know how they did it. But that's the thing, just the fact that they make it so illegal and so difficult for people, that's why we want to make it an inspiring project. It's just, it's just an, a, see what we can do, you know? Let's see. And people will say, oh my God, if we can, when we make it, it'll be like, I want to live like that. I want to build an eco house for 10 grand and not have to pay a mortgage all my life or throw a thousand quid down the chute every month like I do for my rent, you know? It's crazy. So if we can do that and get, when we can do that, I keep saying if, and people can say, oh my God, what, you can build an eco house for 10,000 quid legally? Because we've got an architect on our side who actually can make it happen as well. You can also acquire the land and build from there, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. If you have people who are knowledgeable around yeah. or investment, yes. or yes. um, you can then protect the land to do what you want with that once it's yours. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. The reason we're going for the farm thing is because once it's a farm, it's like, well, we're growing food, it's a business. And we're talking about a shop there, a vegetable shop, and you know, uh, maybe a box scheme as well, right? So it's an inspiring, wow, look what are these guys are doing. I want to live like that. Well, quick, you four or five people sell your houses, let's get another family, let's get another. Look, I might be a delusional old hippie, I don't know. No, no, no. But I, I've got, I, I've got I, it's, I, I can't think of anything else. It, well, it seems you, to be. Yeah, well, we need to create our, our own reality. Yeah. And yeah. that's what you're doing, and we're trying to do that too. And then yeah. You but once we get our land, and we build the on it, and we have you know, people. Yeah, how yeah. How do we do that? Because they have drones. And, yeah. I mean, I thought about that. How, I mean, have you got any light that can shine on that? Or shotguns, <laughs> ca catapults. Yeah, catapults. We've thought about those. Wild things. dogs, snarling Alsatians, yeah. traps, bombs. <laughs> you know. I mean, right, how look. do we protect ourselves? Because now the technology is so much more advanced yeah. than what we think. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. send out drones. Oh, no, for sure. For sure. 
Yeah. yeah, that's why I feel, that's why I feel the urgency really, you know. And um, I know a guy called uh, his name's Wild John. I Wild John, if you're watching, and he's got a place and he shows people how to make clothes and catapults and God knows what and arrows and bows and arrows. But you know, I, that's well, why I, stuff, I, guess. I know. <laughs> but, but that's why I'm, I'm so concerned because I do think that we've got to do something quite soon, you know. Um, and, and who knows, maybe later on there will be more opportunities. I do think it's like a cancer eating its own tail. You know? I think it's a monster eating its own tail, and I, I think it's almost devouring itself. It's yes, so horrible, you know. Yeah. And that's good, you know, because a, a cancer eventually kills its own body, you know. Um, so I think there's great hope in the fact that they're exposing themselves so much now. And making mistakes. And making big mistakes. And there's an old Zarustrian proverb which says, Eve will finally become stupid. Yeah. And I love that. <laughs> That's brilliant. I yeah. love that. And, 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 it has got to that. Look at Joe Biden, he's not string is coming out. How could any, anyone <laughs> take a single thing? It's incredible, isn't it? It is unbelievable. It's so unbelievable. <laughs> but it's just becoming one giant joke. And it's like, I think it's, it's, they expose themselves now. We don't have to even shine a light on them. You know, it's like, well, just look at them, you know. But look, I mean, they've, they're, they're, they're very, they've got a lot of power behind them, they've got a lot of money, and, 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 but I do think it's about team building and, 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 and families coming together now, and I'm so inspired to just be in this room with you lot. It's just, it just gives me great hope, you know. We say, oh, well, what are we going to do? Well, well, something's happening already, it is. It's, 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 it's started, you know. It's that there's a revolution of consciousness and, and, and things are changing. So it, can only, it can only go better, actually. Yeah. Just spiral up. You know, the, the idea of fear operating in a world where, so for example, if you turned off the TV, if everyone turned off the TV, yeah. right, then that reality just dissolves straight yeah. away because that's the only thing that feeds it. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 I, I, on a slightly negative note, what does really worry me is, is I think if I was as psychopathic and evil and, and dark as they actually are, which we know they are. What would I do if I saw things changing, if I was being exposed as they are being exposed? Well, I'd, I'd do something crazy. I'd blow the whole place up. Or I'd do, you know, there's a guy called Tim Cast. He does good shows. And he said that he doesn't think that people would. But I disagree. I, I, I think they're just so nuts. They crash everything and burn everything. They don't care. They're, they're evil. You know? But you know, I think everyone's got goodness in them. And I think there is a smelling source from within. You know? mm -hmm. I just want to support what um, Robin said. Um, something that we've noticed during this storm for the last couple of years, we get into, we get into lots of conversation with people, and there's a very clear, um, it's a very clear uh, thing whereby um, those people who, once you get to them, can, can see see through the propaganda, um, they're up, they're absolutely wide awake. Etc. Etc. Nearly, nearly all of them never watch um, um, TV. So there's there's something, uh, and at least thinking through as to as to how that works. But I'm convinced that, as uh, Paul was saying, TV and the way that the way that it kind of takes over people, uh, people's consciousness is a is a major factor in this. And I'm convinced. That if huge numbers of people just stopped watching TV, it would make an enormous difference to the way to people's capacity to see through the lies and the propaganda and yeah. the kind of it manipulation would. It would. and all that. And just that frequency on the BBC where it goes beep, 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 if you study that frequency, I'll bet you it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hypnotic. And they've now got a counter, I think, on there. It's going 10, 20, yeah. 15. That's what they do in hypnotism. They count you down until you're there. Uh, you know. So it's, it's very worrying. But I do think more and more people are... are what were you going to say? You, you were going to say something. Oh, the gentleman there? No. Yeah. What were you going to say earlier? You were say, oh, right. I thought you were going to say something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just thought that on a local level, after hearing what you said, <laughs> everyone in this room went away with the intention of creating some kind of community whereby we've got our own food, we've grown our own food, we're, we're helping each other, we're showing kindness to each other. That in itself is a start. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. absolutely. And, and, and it's, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of power in nature to there create is. those manifestations yeah. and manifest those sort of things. It's really liberating. A lot of people around Top Desert are doing it, you know, just they've got, and they're starting to come together like little families, you know. 
it's really inspiring, you know. Yeah. It's amazing, yeah, it's, and they've got yeah, and they've got all this food. It's like my God, you know, and they've got their own water, and they've got you know, and I think it's 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 it's, it's happening too slow for me, but you know, perhaps that's the way it's going. It's, isn't it? it it's actually getting more and more um, exponentially quicker. Yeah. It's yeah. still, for, for, for you've been doing it for 25 years, so for you, of course, it's slow. Like, oh, God, I'm so bored. It's like I'm dying of boredom. I, 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 I want to see it happen so quick, but I, I think it's had to get to this point where people will, you know, because most people, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to be comfortably numb. I mean, Pink Floyd wrote that great song, you know, comfortably numb. People are comfortably numb, you know. It's like, oh, well, I am, well, you know, unless I've got to do it, you know. You know, unless I've got to do it, then well, you also I always, always see the, uh, the opulence, you know, the crazy opulence just before an empire falls. Yeah. Because that's it would make people so comfortable. Yeah. Like, you know, three course meals and whatever. Yeah. Else. Like, yeah. You couldn't give it to us, but no. when it gets to their living room. Yeah. 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 For sure. You know. For sure. Jason, what what are you talking about with um, with the eco? Yes. Yeah. It's truly magnificent. Yeah. And, and I think it's really important that all of us here and, and way beyond here think in those terms. Mm. But as you alluded to earlier in your talk, we're much closer, I feel, to the whole system of collapsing. Mm. So, well, purpose, by, purposely by, by, by purchasing farms, and I think that's a cracking mm. idea, mm. it's not going to be the solution for everybody. No. I mean, people in through might be able to do it, people in top might be able to do it, and other pockets around the country. Yeah. But not the entire population. Absolutely. Yeah. But what we are closer to mm. is the complete collapse yeah. of the existing system. Yeah. And, and as I said, you alluded to it earlier. If we look at what the situation is with regard to the currency, for example, mm. the rising in energy prices, mm. the Ukraine Russia war, mm. uh, paedophilia that's, mm. that's, that's coming out more and more, <coughs> and you, you, you dipped into that with your own conferences on the subject. And, um, us, we're quite new to it, but mm. we've gone quite deep. Mm. Um, all of these things, including what's been going on in, in the States with, uh, with uh, Alex Jones yeah. and Infowars, yeah. uh, the lies attached to, and we believe they are lies attached to, uh, Sandy Hook, yeah. the Boston bombing, yeah. the Manchester Arena bombing, yeah. uh, the stabbings at the now bombs in London, all fictitious. Yeah. Now, what the government can't, what any government around the world can't do at the moment is afford to let people understand that it's all been a lie. Mm. I believe that, or we believe, that there, there are one trip with this. There's going to be one ending, and people are going to understand in the not too distant future now that it was all a lie. Mm. And at that point, everything collapses. Mm. Mm. And it's at that point where we can build utopia on Earth. Yeah, yeah. Well said, and I, I oft, yeah. <laughs> well said, well said. And I've, oft, I've often thought that it, 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 we don't, we don't want everyone to. I sort of often said that I don't, It wouldn't be good for everyone to uh, wake up at the same time, because everything would collapse. People, people are like, well, perhaps it's got to be in the incremental way. You know? yeah, yeah. Otherwise, everything would collapse. I'm not. What? I'm not doing that. I'm not going to work tomorrow. I've been tricked. You know, I'm not going to be a slave anymore. So. Yeah, me, me, I, I, I think I'd be dead honest with you. I've got to tell you, I, I haven't got the answers. I think all bets are off. I really do. Uh, and it will, what we do and other people do, will make a big difference. But I agree with you. I mean, uh, and I, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because I want to just say that this, just to cover myself. Yeah, in, in one sense, I should have said this absolutely, and you'll be reminding me next time I will in another talk. So it's all about the farms, blah, blah, blah. No. How about the people who are going to do that? You can't, you can't let them burn on their ships, you know. Those poor people. So we do need to change it from the inside out as well, not from the outside in, right? It's very important, you know, that we need to create a new system. I mean, I've been in Houses of Parliament. It was a dreadful, dirty, horrible place, you know. Someone bought me lunch there. A guy who's a, a journalist, a really nice guy. And it's horrible in there. You know, it's, the place needs to be brought to its knees and collapsed and burnt and all the filth burnt forever, you know. But I think it, we, we've got to also try and change it, not just create new societies, but we've got to change it from the belly of the beast. We really have, and that might mean people going into politics in its current form and trying to shift it, it inside without being ethically compromised, you know. And GB News gives me hope. People say they control opposition, but uh, Neil Oliver, he's an amazing guy, you know, Dan Wood, oh, yeah, Mark Stein, for God's sake, you know. Yeah, I'm going to go, no, that guy. 
Oliver was saying, oh, everyone get microchip. Was he? Yes. Oh, bloody hell, I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, yeah, saying it's, great, it's, it, it's handy, it's on the bottom. <laughs> and talking about it, saying what a great idea it is, they're all bastards. Oh, <laughs> End of. Oh, boy, me, Charlie. <laughs> That is the guy, yeah. Here yeah. yeah, with a black beard, yeah. Yeah, it's a oh, good kind of beard. Oh dear. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's handy. Let's yeah. all get microchips. Yeah. But I do, I do think sometimes maybe surprises will come. I think once things are getting up, even when someone's collapsing, even if if you're dying of cancer, some some treatment might pop up that you might not have found if you had. You know, I think things will happen, and I think necessity is the mother of invention. So as things collapse. You know, inspirational ideas will come up. You know, I'm hoping. You know, and, and we will shift and change gears. But we've got our fault. We have. And I don't wake up every morning like I said. Hey, 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 hey. I don't. You know, I don't. I wake up. It would sometimes. I wake up with this every morning. I feel. I feel quite upset most mornings. I got to do the same thing. I go back and forth to my shop. It sounds real more romantic. I've got a gallery set of my paintings. Quite often, I'll walk up the hill backwards because it's just a change. You know. <laughs> oh, it's the God. I mean, it's like the boredom, the monotony, you know. You know, so we're all bored to death with what we're doing in a lot of ways. Even just getting up and being a human and washing under your arms and shaving, you know, I am shaving. I'm gonna get a beard again like you, mate, you know? It's like here I am shaving again. This is ridiculous. Someone might not buy a picture if I don't shave or if I don't have a nice shirt on. It's like come. So it's monotonous and it's tiresome, you know. But what at least we're all talking about it. Something's changing. Something's shifting, you know. I know it is, you know. And, and, and that's what keeps, keeps me talking about it, you know. But I've, I've got to keep going, you know.